I'm Yay! Clicking, I'm clicking start stream. I'm not going to touch anything until it actually goes live. And I'm not going to touch anything either. <laughs> Except my food. But what I am going to do is I'm going to open this in a new tab and I'm going to tell everyone, hey, stream is up over here. Comments cannot contain links. Did they finally fix that? So the one time I want to be able to post a link to people, <laughs> I can't? <laughs> Are oh. you kidding me? Google, you Go ruin everything. This you is why we everything. can't have nice things. Uh. This is why we can't have nice... Oh, yeah, well, I don't know, actually. Um... Well, okay then. Let's try this. Are we live over here? We have one person watching this stream. It shows. Tech talk take, tech talk take two derp. That is actually hard to say. Tech talk take two derp. I'm, gonna, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna, even gonna try. <laughs> I'm gonna let more people. Day, I'm lucky I'm speaking English. <laughs> oh, after the day I've had today, I'm telling you. Uh, okay, I'm gonna let more people uh, kind of filter their way on in here. Sure thing. And yeah. I don't know why your your <clears throat> webcam is like way off to the side on my screen. Let's see if I can fix that real quick while uh, <clears throat> while we do that. Window capture, select region. Oh, no wonder why. Okay, let's try that. See if we can get you in there without seeing my ugly mug. Okay, there we go. Okay. All right. I think that's good. That'll work. And. Still learning this whole OBS thing too. Okay, how many people we got in here right now? Only nine. Where are you people? Because they're like, oh, stream over, one minute stream. Hey, I bet you the retention on that's going to be pretty high. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's bring up Twitter. Sorry guys, I don't. I'm, I'm going to explain what happened here in a second. Um, uh, once again. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So if you guys thought the YouTube's comment section was bad, they're. Um, they continue to have absolutely garbage live streaming capabilities. So I know a lot of people are going to ask, well, why aren't you doing this on Twitch? Well, the problem is OBS doesn't allow you to dual stream like I was doing with XSplit. And I'm tired of giving XSplit my money. So yeah, it's one of those companies I won't tell shut up, take my money, just shut up. I don't like XSplit very much. So OK, everybody tweet out the stream. It's Tech Talk. We're back. We're live. And uh, we have a guest, a somewhat mythical guest. You are a mythical creature. You are a female in the tech world, and that is incredibly rare. <laughs> <laughs> and even more rare is the fact that you came from the automotive world. What is happening? Tell everyone yeah. who you are and introduce yourself, please. Hi, my name is Jennifer. I feel like I've been introducing myself all day. Um, mm -hmm. My name is Jennifer. You're going to start doing that when you get gas. Hi, I'm Jennifer, and I would like to get uh, 20 on yeah. pump 9, please. Today I'm going to be giving you an overview of pump number 9. I mean, <laughs> my name is Jennifer, and I'm a, a video personality for Newegg.com. You can find me on Newegg TV on YouTube, and occasionally I do uh, spots on other other tech channels. This is my first time appearing on somebody else's live stream um, like this, like as a conversation. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, I was going to say you were on uh, Kyle's stream with us, but that's a little yeah, different. Yeah, kind of. I kind of like stream crashed that because. <laughs> yeah, you just sort of popped I, up in the background one I day. Was like, never I'm like, there's a. Like, Kyle, Kyle, there's a girl in the room. Uh, <laughs> don't turn around. <laughs> um, yeah. That wasn't really planned. It just so happened that he needed a lot more equipment from work than we thought we needed. We didn't have enough computers. We didn't have enough headsets. We didn't have enough mice. So I ended up doing the mad dash run back to work to but pilfer it was fun, our it? storage unit and <laughs> come home with everything or come back with everything. And um, so I just was like, well, I'm playing. I brought this laptop home so I could play. <laughs> yeah, and guys, definitely give her a big thank you for hanging out with me today because not only is she doing this immediately after getting off work. In fact, she was eating her dinner prior to the stream and I felt bad. She's still at work doing it in the Newegg Studios. So mm -hmm. if she, any of you watch any Newegg TV, you know, like everybody knows this throne and everybody wants to ask. I bet you we get I'm I'm trying to think we're probably going to get it three questions if I if I sit away from it people are going to ask. Yeah. That's why I'm trying to block it. At okay. least three people will ask. I've, I noticed it when it first popped up because I've been watching New Age TV for long before I did YouTube. Before I even realized that there was a such thing as a YouTube subscription. I mean, that's how bad I was at YouTube 
a year ago, <laughs> a little year mm-hmm. and a half ago. Um, but yeah, guys, she does. Uh, make sure you check out Newegg TV. Give a little, give some support there, and say you found her because of TikTok. Because uh, Newegg TV is pretty funny, and I think they're going to take over the world, especially Yoked. I, as a live streamer myself and a content creator, I can't get enough of Yoked. And damn it, I wish I were funny enough to come up with that kind of content. <laughs> You know what? I wish I was funny enough to come up with that kind of content, too. Oh. No, but do you know what was great about last no, night's I, Yoked? Was, what was Kyle that? is so joking, and you are so serious. So the contrast between the two, and I swear to God, I'm going to see you on like at CNN one day, because when you go into like anchor mode, you totally sound like an anchor. Oh, that's funny. I actually <laughs> uh, did broadcast journalism all through high school, and I produced a small cable television show for my high school district mm-hmm. that handled um, all of the event coverage for the, all of the various high schools. And we did sketch comedy, and it was like a sketch comedy news show. So it's funny. I came uh, all this time, and a graduate degree later, I went back to doing what I was doing in high school. But, yeah. you know, I also have a lot of theater training and acting training, um, you know, professional training and stuff like that, which is well, kind of why they picked me up. Let's go ahead and talk about that real quick. So you're, you're sure. professionally trained on how to talk and how to deal with different uh, ton- tonalities of your voice. Because, mm-hmm. you know, if, if you talk on camera the same way you talk to someone in person, it's 10 times more boring and monotone on camera than in, if. Like, oh, yeah. If, I mean, if I talk to you in person like I'm talking to you right now, people would be like, this guy's had way too much caffeine. Seriously. But if I'm just having a conversation and I record it, it's incredibly boring to listen to. I've never (laughs) had any sort of formal training on how to speak or anything like that. I've when I really try, people have actually told me that, you know, you should consider going into radio because you have a very a very easy voice to listen to. And it's like, Mm -hmm. well, it's funny because if you watch my first YouTube videos, it's hi, I'm you're watching Jay's Two Cents and we're gonna do so what I did for like the first three or four months of my YouTube I won't even call it career, but my YouTube experience, mm-hmm. people thought I was crazy because I would be driving home from work with the windows down and I would be practicing like run the radio for KB5516. Now I'm bringing you the weather. It's going to be a hot day, ladies and gentlemen. And I just like mm-hmm. went way over the top. That way, once I toned it down, it was where we are now. So people no, that's ask. That's perfect. That's um, actually, you organically discovered the way theater voice training works because mm-hmm. what. What you're trained to do is exaggerate something to the biggest, fullest right. potential that you can. And you have and to then, open your mouth when you talk. <laughs> and then say it faster, and then say it faster, and then say it faster until you are attaining that level of clarity at yep. a normal speed and normal face structure. Yeah. But I have to tell you, like my, my early videos uh, for Newegg TV are also very painful to watch. Mm-hmm. So um, I've come a long way in five months, but I think that has to do with just the sheer volume of videos um, yeah. that I have to churn out in a given week. Well, as my channel grows, more and more people go back to that very first video to see what was the first thing this guy did. And they watch it and they're like, this is garbage. This is really <laughs> bad. <laughs> And I tell people all the time, oh, God, please don't go back to my first video. I leave it up there as an example of what not to do when trying to start (laughs) out on on YouTube. (laughs) So, yeah, that's interesting. I had no idea that you you had all of that that training. My wife's cousin uh, is actually a, um, I don't know what the right word would be. She she did theater um, from a little girl all the way up through. She's in college now, and she took theater arts. She's got a a master's. At least a bachelor's degree. She might be a graduate student of theater and, and performing arts. Yeah. She now works on Cirque du Soleil and she does costume design and she does a lot of. She travels with um, shows on cruise ships and she loves it. Right, single. Wow. She's single and just loves it. Yeah. And uh, it's really really funny. But what I did in high school was I was the AV guy, making sure everything worked for you guys. That was my job. Mm-hmm. So it's funny that I turned out to be a content creator on YouTube. So people are always asking me, like, well, how do you know how to edit? And how do you know how to do this? And the filming and the angles and all that. It's like, well, that's what I sort of self-taught myself to do was production value. And that's mm-hmm. what I really like about this. Yeah, and it- definitely. And it sets you apart, too, from um, – I watch a lot of amateur videos, actually, um, when I'm looking at a new product that I have no idea how to talk about it. Mm-hmm. and. It's not like we have a uh, an employee manual laying around here that says, okay, when you're doing a video, you do it like this. There's nothing like that. It's all trial by fire, and you figure it out as you go. And so yeah. I watch a lot of other 
other YouTubers' videos. And I think what sets you apart and definitely has um, caused kind of this tidal wave of growth you've been experiencing in your subscriber base is your production value, is your attention to detail. Not a lot of people know how to pick up a camera and set up a frame. And Speaking um, of camera, there it is. I had, I had, there to, it is I had right to show it off. <laughs> <laughs> we we used it today actually uh, uh, on my lunch break because I'm you and I talked last night. I'm so backlogged on product, guys. Half the stuff you see over here hasn't been reviewed yet, and it's waiting to be reviewed. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm just a little backed up. And then I've got Fractal Design that contacted me today, and then I got uh, ASUS that started preliminary talks, and it's like oh, oh like, cool. So it's like okay, I am so backed up right now. So I have to find the time. So today I, I had one of my one of my assistants who I, I go through a couple of diff, three different people who help me out with camera work, mm -hmm. and uh, I called up last minute. Literally called up. His name's Coconut Monkey. Some of you guys in the stream may know him. Called up Coconut and said, "Hey, can you meet me on my lunch break? Literally at the park out out across from you know the the coffee shop that we normally go to." So we did a we did a a review out in the middle of like public. Which was really interesting because I'm walking with that big old camera and everyone's looking around like, "Is that to shoot a movie? Is this gonna be a movie? What's gonna happen here?" So yeah. everyone's watching and I'm just doing this review. And here's what's funny. And if you guys are watching this right now, I want you to listen for it later when I put up the review, probably in an hour after the stream. There was some crazy guy standing out on the corner, just screaming at the top of his lungs. And I'm thinking to myself, "That would be my luck. There would be the random crazy guy walking down the street yelling at the bird, and he is." screaming top of his lungs and so I'm like well can't do anything about that now it's already in the video so I actually kind of <laughs> annotated it and did a little ding click like for the crazy guy in the background you know so it's it's but so I'm at that point now where I have to find the time literally anywhere I can find it to do these videos so you talk about yeah. production quality and I'm my biggest critic I don't feel that my quality is where it should be. I really don't. And that's just because I'm such a perfectionist. And I mm -hmm. find every little thing wrong and I obsess over it and then I get all upset. So then there, when you start getting contacted by major PC manufacturing companies, when you're a geek like I am, it's like, oh my God, oh my God, MSI contacted me, oh my God, what am I gonna do because my videos suck? But mm -hmm. then it's like Jerry says, if your stuff sucked, they wouldn't be contacting you, so. Yeah, exactly. And I put a lot of pressure on myself because here, um, you know, my job does depend on my ability to do this, but yeah. also I just, I feel like the reputation that we have and that we have um, cultivated and I just, I want to continue to build, I think we should always strive to have a better quality video as sometimes the time just isn't there and I just have to shoot something out very quickly and I feel bad for our viewers when that happens because yeah. I feel like you know what this is a good product I'm not allowed to say that but you know when I talk about some things that I'm like god this is a good product and I really wish I could have given it more time mm -hmm. but you know it just it is what it is and honestly like our I, I could turn I could turn my computer around here and show you our pile of stuff oh god let's see it yep. <laughs> um, yeah you should see inside the closet <laughs> I won't open the closet because I'm afraid the closet monster is going to come out and get me. <laughs> and um, this is one room of two, and the yeah. other room is twice this size, and we can't even roll a hand truck through it right now because right before Black Friday, all of our vendors want videos. Oh, and hey, by the way, I ordered a monitor chill. from you guys yesterday. I tweeted that out. That Oh, yeah, you got the, the deal the, I had on the 24-inch? I had to because I don't need anything super fancy, and it's for mm -hmm. my test bench. So I was like, 129 bucks for a 24 inch, five millisecond. I already know what kind of panel it is. I have a 27 inch of the next model up for Mesa right in front of me. Mm -hmm. So I was like, 129 bucks. I tweeted that out, and I think like 10 or 12 people told me they bought it because it was the last day. Yeah, and my roommate even uh, said something about it. He was like, "Wow, you guys had such a good deal on a monitor." And I was like, "Why don't you get it?" He said, "Because I have to pay for my PS4." I'm like, <laughs> I'm gonna have my PS4 for no monitor. <laughs> <laughs> it should be here. It should be here tomorrow. In fact, um, I have another case from Cooler Master showing up today. It should be here for the test bench. So yeah, lots of yeah, fun stuff ahead. Which case? Uh, the the half XB Evo. Oh okay. It's the refresh. The Evo. They're like really backlogged on it. And I was also told that the stacker is on its way pretty soon. People keep people keep asking me about the stacker because they oh. know I'm so into my 900D. 
Mm-hmm. And, Re- and Rajiv is, so I'm going to get that 900D off your desk. I'm going to get rid of that computer. I'm mm-hmm. like, no, I really like my 900D. No, you see, you'll see. You'll have a stacker on your desk. You'll see. Uh, the like, stacker is, I don't know, it's cool, but... It is. It's um, so not, like, from my aesthetic standpoint, I think it's not that attractive. <laughs> like, now, you've seen it in person. It's not a good-looking case. You've yeah. seen it in person. I haven't yet. Um, I do like the modular aspect to it. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think I would need it, though. You know, per- I personally. Think, I don't know anyone, like, what, what could you possibly, if you're doing major... 3D graphics rendering for a dinosaur movie, you might need something that could go in the stacker well, with all the water cooling. Like, it actually has uh, water cooling grommets in it so that you can route yeah. water cooling through Between the top the two and levels, then back. Yeah. Have you seen my water cooling Madness. setup, though? No. See, I'm, you're kind of speaking right to me, though. I mean, let me... Uh... Let's see. You're going to have to watch the stream for this one. I want everyone else to see it, too. This is... Oh, God. I just knocked your camera over. Ah, we're falling. Okay. So if you look at the stream, you'll see I'm pointed at my 900D in about 60 seconds from now. I've got a quad rad, and it just disconnected her. Dang it. She's... Guys, she'll be back. She has um, issues sometimes with where they are (laughs) in that office. So... Yeah, in that office, they have some issues going in and out of there. So, <sighs> anyway, um, yeah, she'll be back, I promise. <laughs> we are just so full of technical difficulties tonight. Let's see where we are in the stream, see if we can't catch up. Mm-hmm-hmm. You guys really like talking about graphics cards, don't you? You guys really, really do. Well, then. Um, people are asking me while we're waiting for her, she to come back. Um, you guys are asking me why the AMD card I did is performing so good in Battlefield and why all the AMD cards are performing so good in Battlefield. I really honestly think, um, it has a lot to do with driver optimization for AMD and they've got to spend more time with the card than... Hello, uh, can you see me? Can we you are... We are reconnecting. There you are. Are you guys having router issues there again? I don't know. Okay, let me get your cam back up there because I had. Uh... Yeah, I don't know. We, they do this to us um, on on our Twitch days too. Like the we think we suspect that IT will see like a, a large amount of of transfer happening and they will throttle us so we've we've had to call them on occasion and warn them about what we're doing so that they don't do that I don't think that's what's happening now everybody's gone home so it could just be I don't know who knows okay all right well I don't know if you saw it on the stream I showed my 900d which has got a quad rad and a triple rad and a 250 millimeter (laughs) res and graphics cards cooled so I can the water cooling aspect of that case I really it really does appeal to me Mm-hmm. The the one drawback to it, in my opinion, and I told Rajiv straight up, it doesn't support quad rad, and I want quad, at least well, one quad radiator. Then you need the stacker. Well, the, but the stacker only does triples. Granted, I can put four mm-hmm. triple rads in there. I, I don't know. We'll just have to see. I mean, I'm going to review it either way, and I'm going to be honest about it. He knows that. We've we've already met yeah. in person, and I've told him, you know, my honesty yeah. is what I care most about. Um, let's see, people. Do you see, I don't know if you can see the chat at all. You can't, can you? Can you see? I think she just disconnected again. Oh, boy. All right. So we're going <laughs> to we having some serious technical difficulties on the um, from the new egg office there. Oh, geez. We'll get her back eventually. Um, all right, we'll just look at some of your comments here. We had a whole bunch of stuff to talk about, but okay. Uh, take a look at all the things you need to review. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, Bob is building a graphics card. Oh, good. Bob is in here, isn't he? I hate that guy. Jay, you've become a lady. I'm a ladies' man. Uh, Jay, please comment on the Kaveri APUs. I don't really follow APUs. I really don't. I'm sorry. I just don't. Uh, I think APUs may become a bit more optimized because of the consoles, clearly. 
but I don't know. Jay, am I using OBS? Yes, I'm using OBS. Uh, Jay, I think I'm going to buy the 780 Ti so that I can release my anger at NVIDIA by smashing that card. Yeah, good luck. Um, you really wouldn't smash, smash $700, I'm sure. This is sounding like a conversation between two people. That's kind of odd because that's sort of what was happening there, isn't it? Um, let's see. Oh, and that's a picture of my dog, by the way. Don't stress out, Jay. I'm not stressing. This is funny, actually. It really is funny to me that their the connection keeps kicking her off or getting throttled somehow. <clears throat> I think she's on her way back. Yeah, you know, all I can figure out is that uh, in the evening is when we generally do our upload of all our videos. So right now our oh, system is trying yeah, to upload yeah. probably about eight videos. I gotcha. Well, just come back whenever it does. We got a, we got about 98 people in here right now. I am sorry, 98 people. So for... here's what we'll do. Let's see, because people are already like, talk more tech, we don't, blah, blah, blah. Guys, I talk about what I want to talk about on my show. Remember, it's Jay's Two Cents, not Jay's Two Computer Talk. All right? So <laughs> secondly, fine, since they want to talk tech and stuff, and you're in the middle of building a rig, why don't you go ahead and show us what it is you wanted to show, which was the world's fastest okay. unboxing. Oh, yes, uh, world's <laughs> fastest unboxing. Here's the box. You guys asked me about the Bit Phoenix and Phenom, and I said I don't have one. But guess who does? Here it is. Oh yes, oh yes. Who are you talking to? So uh, you're going to be the Phenom who, expert now. Those those of you who weren't in the the first nine people in the in the chat when we started, um, I'm Jennifer from New Egg TV, and I've been invited to be on Jay's Two Cents tonight on Tech Talk, which is do, great. Do this in your anchor voice. Hello and good evening everyone. I'm Jennifer from Newegg TV. Today I will be talking to you about the BitPhoenix Phenom case, which I plan to do a mini ATX or micro ATX build in. In the future, I hope to do more unboxings of cases like this. Okay, can I stop? <laughs> <laughs> Unique New York. Unique New York. Unique. I actually have a lot of trouble. Um, I don't know. Uh, a does lot it of really, people... real quick, does it really come? Yeah, I guess I watched you no, unbox that. No, you, I'm sorry, I pulled the side off because okay. I thought it would be faster than, But But the know, inside looks before. like, the inside looks through. like this a actually... California earthquake hit. What happened? Um, well, this was previously unboxed by my coworker Joanne. Oh, okay, I was like, really, did they <laughs> ship like that? <laughs> and she tends to just kind of put things away that way, you know. <laughs> Each their own. Um... <laughs> Now we're so, done. Just cramming in there with your foot. <laughs> All right, we're good. Uh, <laughs> here is your quick start guide, and some very sharp. Like these are the sharpest thumb screws I've ever seen. Oh my god, you can like, gouge think, somebody with that. I think I could drill into a wall with that. All <laughs> right, so inside the case, we seem to have a, a, a holder for a drive. <laughs> it's been abused, and uh, you know some wires and stuff. Um, we have two, I think, 140 inch, or I'm sorry, 140 millimeter fans. One in the back, one mounted to the bottom. 140 inch fan, that would cool you. Yeah, <laughs> 140 <laughs> millimeter. You got to remember my day. <laughs> it's I, not easy. People think that we can just talk, and everything that comes out of our mouth is exactly as we think we're saying it, and that's not true. <laughs> I think this is interesting. I haven't had a chance really to uh, look at this case much, but there is a power supply. Uh, extension cord mounted in here and I think it's so that you can mount your uh, power supply externally so this would route out down below the case and actually could, be outside. It could be like the Silverstone FT03 or FT03 where the power supply doesn't actually face out. You have to run the cable to an extension like it may be in there yeah. sideways. Well look here's the um, hole in the bottom for the power supply so it kind of fits in there like Jolt! oh straight up and down but well, that's good for cooling but the power connector is still in the back in all of its you know traditional yeah. places right here between below the io so hole. that it, that extension cable then is for you to just plug it in where you would normally put the cord exactly okay. yeah it's the the silverstone they, silverstone does that a lot with their cases yeah i think um silverstone i suspect actually lends i think their fan designs to some of these companies because these fans are very silverstone looking and even the feel of them the material they're made out of i think they probably lent this design to bit phoenix yeah i'm only that's just pure speculation based on my handling of of all of those products well if there's one thing i've learned since i've gotten hands-on with so many products over the last mm -hmm. year is a lot of companies lease their designs to other companies Mm -hmm. 
There's only a handful of companies really making all this stuff. A uh, so big, I, big I, thing that comes to mind is Seasonic Power Supplies. Mm -hmm. Everybody is practically a Seasonic. They, they're just rebranded. I'm sure there's a way I could get this farther away from me. So you, well, anyway, I'll let you look at the case. I chose this case. I just really love the style of the Bit Phoenix cases. I like the Phenom case because it has a clean front. You know, it just uh, doesn't have any buttons. It doesn't have any holes. It doesn't have any anything going on. I like that it's just a very um, architecturally pleasing design to look at. And that's my biggest beef, actually, with Corsair cases. Mm -hmm is that I just, I, they're not attractive, most of them. And you I know, love Regime and, and everybody, or you know, Cooler Master. I just, the Cooler Master cases, I just, you know, they're not. You know, that's the thing with like. like black boxes to me. <laughs> see, that's the thing with cases, and I never take offense when someone, if someone doesn't like my build, like, I, mm -hmm. I moved out of an NZXT Switch 810 into the 900D, mm -hmm. and a lot of people were like, oh, we, I like the NZXT better. And it's like, Hey, you know, I, I don't take offense to that because cases are 100% personal preference. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And this this is going to be in my my space, in my room, in my personal living space. So I want it to not be like, ah, look, there's a computer in the middle of my room. Right. You know, and uh, I, I want it to kind of blend into my decor. I personally really like white cases. My NZXT was mm -hmm. white. Um, mm -hmm. And I've even debated getting my 900D powder coated white, but because they just look so clean, both when yeah. it comes to dust and then just the design of it. And the Phenom case actually has this really neat kind of rubberized coating on it too that doesn't absorb fingerprints, it doesn't absorb mm. dust, it's super easy to wipe off, it's scratch resistant. And see, for and me, I don't like the way the USB ports come off the side. Like, that bothers me. Yeah, it only doesn't bother me because of where I'm going to put it. Mm -hmm. I do wish they were on the other side. I wish they weren't on the left side of the it's case. It's going to be on the, on the right, right side, side of you then? The yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. I've noticed most case fa manufacturers seem to think that the case is going to go on your left. Most people put it on their right. And mm -hmm. like fractal design, all their doors open swinging to the left, which means you're, you, you know, if I were to, it was on the right, you open the door, you still can't really access your drives or your switches. I'm not really sure why. Maybe the next time Rajiv is in, I'll mention that to them. But for me, it's like I am a left-handed person, so the left side of my desk is already covered in things yeah. that I need quick access to. So I can't put anything to my left. Okay. So you're, you're a lefty. You're a, you're a gearhead, you're a computer nerd, and you're a lefty. It's just, you're just stacking up the weirdisms. Oh, you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so do you want to talk about what's going in there, or is that a secret for a video or something? Um, you know, I don't know just yet what's going in here. I'm hoping... I'm oh, you hoping... just opened Pandora's box with the chat then. <laughs> oh, well, computer stuff. I think I'm going to put some computer stuff in here. Well, I'm waiting to see uh, if I can get any of our uh, vendors to, you know, kick me some product to yeah. put in it because I am going to show this build. This build's going to be on Newegg TV. It's probably going to be on a few other places where I'm going to talk about it. So I'm kind of hoping to get it kind of sponsored and I would really like to um, see if MSI, because I, I do so much MSI product and I really, really like the people yeah. at MSI and I like the products at MSI. So I'm kind of hoping to get an MSI motherboard in there. I'm with you on um, that one. I, I, MSI has been a brand. A I've used MSI since really people didn't know who they were back in like the late 90s they weren't mm -hmm. big and i can tell you right now if i can get i i mean my 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 system was all sponsored except for mm -hmm. the um the new system I'm building was all sponsored mm -hmm. except for the cpu if i can get it sponsored you know you can with with the exposure you can have for that case so or that well you, you think but we've had bigger people than me get turned down so uh, I'm I'm hope I'm hopeful. <laughs> that just makes me feel so weird that I could easily get you know stuff supplied not only not because hey I'm going to build a computer and I don't want to pay for it it's hey you know I, let's do some reviews on some product and I can and I would use the product not just stick it on the shelf like a lot of people do so it's just well, weird that I was able to pull that off I still don't know how. The backup plan is to build a Frankenstein rig out of whatever I find laying around, which we have. <laughs> quite a lot of things just, you know, laying around, but I'm going to be doing probably an i7-4770K mm -hmm. um, 
I'm going to build it pretty beefy because I'm not entirely sure how many things I'm going to purpose this computer to. I have a lot of plans. I want right. to learn how to do digital photo editing. I want to learn how to do more video editing. I want to um, expand my gaming off of, off of consoles. Um, I've been, you know, slowly learning some PC stuff and definitely found some cool things that I really like and I want to keep mm -hmm. playing and, and keep expanding that. I bought Chivalry during Kyle's live stream because I thought we were going to get to play it and then we never did and now I can't mm -hmm. because I don't have anything at home that's going to run that. But we did play it on the stream or were you not there yet? Oh, I wasn't there yet. I was oh. out running for something that could... We did, we did play it and we learned just how bad I am at that game. <laughs> okay, John, John Joe asked very nicely, please answer this question. I currently sit here pondering what should I wear tomorrow? It is between a red potato shirt. See, this is, this is what I deal with. It's a red, a red polo shirt or a three wolf moon t-shirt. What should you wear? I, I say the wolves. Um, Be a one you man know, wolf pack, if, if you're staying at home, I would go with the three wolf moon wolf pack t-shirt. And also there's a very funny YouTube video about three moon wolf or three yeah three wolf moon t-shirts and you mm -hmm. should look it up it's hysterical yeah and it's See, done to uh the i think the song from pocahontas uh paint can you paint with all the colors of the wind except for it's all about the three wolf moon t-shirt oh man it's weird how some of this <laughs> stuff just takes off okay so it's my turn to it's my turn to do a uh, one thing i like to do on tech talk is i like to kind of feature a, a product i'm getting ready to show on the channel Cool. And last week I showed the Rav Power um, flashlight battery charger thing for your phones. Mm -hmm. I think I showed you that last night, didn't I? Yes. Okay. Now, <clears throat> um, Aqua Tuning slash Alpha Cool is my sponsor. And they know I'm a huge water cooler, so they've started sending me different size radiators and things so I can have various stock to, put, to do mock-up builds in various cases. Mm -hmm. They sent me, and I don't think I will ever be able to use this, but damn it, it's going to go on display. They sent me a triple 40 millimeter fan radiator. Look how little. Look at that. <laughs> it's so cute. <laughs> it's like I asked It's like an to, asthmatic with a straw. What are you going to do with that? <laughs> it's like a harmonica. It's like the size of a harmonica, honestly. It's just a, it, it is thicker than it is wide. Uh, it, it's 40 millimeters wide, 45 millimeters thick. And I, I asked them I, I said, because um, I opened the box and there's a bunch of stuff in there that want me to go over. And I brought this out and I immediately called them up and I said, um, what? <laughs> they said, oh, no, no, just show it. Just do whatever with it. I'm like, okay. I honestly can't think of any scenario where I would ever use this. And he made a very good point. He said, well, we have a lot of people buying. He said they sell out of these every month. Their inventory runs out every month from their manufacturer. And he's told me that people are using these in nitro RC cooling, like for trucks and planes and things. So they're using them in remote control cars. And I okay. thought, you know, that makes perfect sense. And then he said some people use make a dedicated RAM loop out of these. <laughs> so, yeah, I just thought I'd show that to the stream real quick and say, yeah, you're going to see this coming up on the channel. And I have no idea how I'm going to uniquely display this, but... It's like a, I feel like I should maybe put like a G.I. Joe guy next to it and be like, it's a huge radiator. Just put some scale to it. <laughs> that's I don't know. There yeah, you go. that's crazy. I just love that it's thicker than it is wide. The, it, it's, <laughs> the fans that go on it are smaller than the thickness. That's amazing. That's really funny. And actually, you know what? A dedicated RAM loop may not be a bad idea depending on like what type of case it is and what the rest of the configuration is because you wouldn't believe, uh, you know, some things just don't have much ventilation it's actually a concern that i have with the phenom case because mm -hmm. it's it's built to look pretty yeah it's not built for function um hey how does so, the motherboard mount in that phenom is it flat uh, or does it go against the yeah, back wall it goes right inside right here. does it fit micro AT, uh, atx yeah okay yeah this is a micro atx that's so one of the things i'm happy about prodigy has made the move to so start supporting more micro atx because in the beginning it was like mm -hmm. all micro itx stuff yeah well micro mi mini, ITX. mini itx i mean i'm sorry yeah mini itx micro itx doesn't exist anymore i don't think well, no we can just get smaller come on we can do it yeah i did a case um like one of the cases they had me do i don't even remember what it was had a whole bunch of archaic motherboard mounts in it and i was like well Good on them for recycling a design. 
Yeah. People are <laughs> people are asking what headset you're using. I know it's a Steel oh, Series because okay. you bent forward, but they said yes. the mic quality on it's amazing, and I would agree. For a headset, it sounds fantastic. Well, this is the Steel Series Siberia version two, and it is a uh, analog headset actually. So mm. I'm, I'm not plugged in via USB. I'm, I'm plugged in uh, analog. Yep. And if you plug Easy. those in, if you plug those into a good sound card like a Zonar or something, they just sound mm. even better. Oh yes. Well, they are. That's probably, to be honest, why this sounds amazing. I am currently plugged into the MSI GT seventy twenty K. Uh, workstation laptop. This is about a $2,500 workstation laptop, and it has an optimized Dynaudio uh, dedicated audio yes, card. Yes, I need it. to mention. Sorry. And I Please forgot. Please excuse me for sounding as dumb as I do right now. I have <laughs> Hey, you already day. threw out more numbers in a laptop than I could. Guys, I have been asked so many times about gaming laptops. Please, you see her Twitter handle right under her, her video there. Go and send her a talk. A ta a toddler. Go send her a toddler. She <laughs> she needs a child. I need a child. <laughs> it's been a long day for me too. Please don't. I have five. I have Paul. I have Kyle. I have Steve. I have Mr. Lamb. I have my roommate Brian. I don't need any more kids. <laughs> you you are the mother of New Egg TV, is what you are. Pretty much. Okay, send her a follow because she knows so much more than I do about gaming laptops because she she's tasked with learning them for her job. So please. Don't ask me anymore about gaming laptops. I can't answer your questions, but she can help you. And her Twitter is right there under under her video. Go send her a follow right now and stop yeah. asking me for the love of God. Gearhead Girl twenty seven <laughs> on Twitter, and I will do if and if I can, if I don't know the answer, I will find the answer for you because, like you said, I ha I I'm becoming kind of like our gaming laptop person, and so I yeah. I do have to learn a lot about these. And for instance, today I actually spent the first three hours of my dairy, day learning the difference between the dedicated graphics card in a workstation MSI GT70 versus a gaming GT70 mm -hmm. and um, you know what those necessary differences are between gaming and workstation and what that means so that I could talk to all of you about it. <laughs> That's the one thing I can at least tell people is that if you see GT, uh, GTX, let's say the old one, the GTX 680M, it's not the same GTX 680 as what's in a desktop. Just know that the num they, mm -hmm. they kind of confuse you with the numbers. NVIDIA and their discrete graphics, they tend to confuse you with thinking that it's the same level of po discrete power that you get on a desktop. And it's not. It's powerful, but it's certainly not the same just because it's the same number. So, please. <laughs> yeah, mobile graphics, uh, one of the biggest differences I've noticed going from a standard size GPU to a, a mobile graphics GPU, you will see a lot less shader units, mm -hmm. and also obviously your um, uh, your memory bus is going to be a lot smaller. Yeah, I because mean, just they, for the sheer, I mean, when you look at a GPU and you have like yeah. an 11 inch by three inch, you know, you have almost half a square foot of space yep. to work with, and then you put something in a mobile card and you get, you know, maybe six square inches like you cannot we're not there yet folks where yeah. you can have that much video processing shrunk down that small and still get the same i mean it's good and, and the and other unique challenge is they have a tiny heat sink to work with and a and a mm -hmm. what a little 40 millimeter or 50 millimeter fan yeah it's like yeah so if you've ever taken apart pack. a laptop, it's silly how small the fans have to be and that's why these damn things weigh I, as much as a three-month-old baby I have taken apart a laptop. <laughs> I've taken apart a laptop live on live stream before uh, because <laughs> Battlefield 3 pissed me off so much, I ripped it apart with my bare hands. If you guys have seen, if you have been following me long enough and have followed me on Twitch, let me know if you saw that live stream where I, with my bare hands, ripped a laptop into pieces. I'm not kidding. I'll, Jennifer, I'll have to show you the picture later if I can find it. Yeah. On live stream, I obliterated this laptop. And it was it was an HP, at least it wasn't an MSI. But it looks people who've seen the picture thought I did it with an axe. It, I literally ripped the metal. I ripped the TNF panel apart or TN mm. panel apart. It, the metal case was. I started by snapping it in half over my knee. And yeah, I tend to, I lost my temper on that live stream. But you know what's you funny? Know. Everyone <laughs> loved it. <laughs> Everyone loved it. Oh man, that uh -huh. was fun. 
You know, I think people would probably love to watch me do the same thing. And honestly, um, I've come very close to that myself with my uh, my regular laptop, which is an Asus. And uh, I just there are some design things about it that just make it like you want to dig your eyes out. Frustrating. <laughs> yeah. See, there's people in here saying that they saw it live. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. we were there. <laughs> I know. I, that was probably the most fun live stream I ever had, and I forgot to save it. But it's funny, too, because it, it started with me breaking a motherboard in half, and I ripped it all apart with the fibers. I'm, I, I'm pretty strong, so the fact that I was able to do that kind of surprised me, and I'm surprised I didn't cut my fingers off because I was going through yeah, the metal. Yeah, really. <laughs> I was... I was mad. Uh, so anyway. Well, you know, you you always can tell the build quality of an item when you shred it apart. Yeah, <laughs> H HP guys, that was an HP laptop. Hey, wait, what are you saying? Maybe I'm just that strong. What are you saying? Nothing. I'm saying I'm saying if you tried that with with the the laptop I'm sitting with right now, you probably would have more of a struggle. I would hope. Yeah, laptops need to be robust. Okay, we got 120 people in here. Um, Hello, 120 people. Okay, so Gearhead Girl or Jennifer? Jenny mm -hmm. or Jennifer? What do you prefer? Uh, Jenny's fine. Okay. J now, Jenny was at BlizzCon, and I'd like you to tell me what your experience was like there. I mean, you got to dress up as a Death Knight. Did you even know what a mm -hmm. Death Knight was when you dressed up? Uh, I actually thought I was going to be going as a demon hunter from Diablo 3. I didn't know I was going to be going as a Death Knight now, that would have been better. four weeks before. That would have been better. The demon. I hunter. really wanted. I really wanted desperately to be a demon hunter, but um, so I found out I was going to be a death knight, and she sent me some information about it. So I did do a little bit of research, mm -hmm. but um, my roommate Brian, who's a big old World of Warcraft player, he actually helped me create a whole backstory for my character really? and everything. So I was ready. I was at BlizzCon. I knew who I was. I knew who my character was. I was in character the whole time scaring people. I made somebody's kid cry. I felt terrible about that. I was like running after him. No, no, don't cry. Don't cry. I'm sorry. I'm not scary. <laughs> and he's like, ah, get away from me. You should see the, you should see the Halloween thing. I mean, every year I dress up as Jason Voorhees from Friday the 13th. And okay. how old are you, by the way? I won't tell you live. Okay. Do you know who Jason <laughs> Voorhees is? Yes, I okay. do. Okay. Because a lot of people did were like, Jason who? When I... Oh. You know, was doing it on Twitter and stuff. I have an extremely authentic costume that I've made myself from scratch. And the hockey mask I use is actually one of the screen-worn masks. There were three made for the remake movie back in 2009 or whatever. Yeah. So I have one of the ones used on screen. That's how authentic it is. And then a latex hood that was all made, casted to look like, you know, his head and stuff. So it is very, very convincing. I can only imagine there's a 20,000 people block party that goes on for Halloween out here every year. The city shuts down of several blocks. 20,000 people are trick-or-treating. It's dark. There's people out there trying to scare you. Man, I want to go to where you live and trick-or-treat. That's awesome. Every year I end up in the news and I was in the news again this year. But <laughs> my costume is so authentic and I play the part. I know his mannerisms. I know his walks. I know his everything about him. I turn into him. You gotta sell it. You gotta sell it. And I feel bad because the kids sometimes will freak out, but my goal is to scale, scare the parents that grew up in the mm -hmm. 80s and the 70s, knowing that. And I've made quite a few adults like really get scared, but there becomes a point when a crowd starts forming and so many people want pictures that I can't move. And I'm oh, wondering yeah. if you dealt with that at BlizzCon. Uh, I did a little bit. Every time we stopped, people would just start lining up, and it would yeah. like I would be trying to fix some part of my costume that was pinching me in a horrendously bad way, <laughs> and people would just start lining up. Like I'm bent over, it's awkward. <laughs> I'm trying to fix something, and I stand up, and there's 50 people deep. Can we get a picture with you? Can we get a picture with you? And usually we were trying to walk from just one place to another. So we yep. would do as many as we could, but then it would get to be, all right, we have obligations places. And that made it kind of good and bad. It was difficult to, um, you know, have to let people down in those situations because I, I really want to, I, I thrive in the meet and greet era. Right. That's I, fun. I love meeting people. I love public engagement. If you guys... If you're ever at a New Egg event and you meet me, don't be scared to walk up to me. I, like, come up, say hi. I love that stuff. I love meeting the people that, you know, watch our videos and use these products. I love public engagement. So it was really hard for me to have to, like, say, okay, no, I'm sorry. We have to keep going. We have to keep walking. Because I would stand there all day and do pictures with people. Yeah. So we but would you be can, going. You're unique because you can talk. 
but I go four to five hours without saying a word. And people, <laughs> hey, hey, can I? And they're already afraid to come up to me, right? Because I play the part yeah. so well. And I have a real machete. I have a real 24 inch machete. It's brown. <laughs> Uh, well, I've been I've been <laughs> talked to by the police a few times, but they've never asked me about my machete. Usually, they just want to chat with me, but they can't get me to say anything, so it's awkward for them. <laughs> <laughs> so, and it actually happened this last Halloween. This cop came up to me, uh, and uh, he's like, "Hey, man, that looks like that'd be hot in there." And I just stop and I'm staring at him. I'm holding a machete in my hand, and I'm having a stare down with a police officer. And he's like, "Yeah, that looks hot." I'm not saying anything. He goes, "Having fun?" I'm not saying anything. I'm like this close to the guy, right? And I'm thinking to myself, this can go one of two ways. <laughs> he can appreciate the fact that I'm in character, or he can start to just want to find a way to harass me. Because I am holding a 24-inch blade. Now, the blade is ground down, but it is still a machete. And so he's like, well, um, have a good night, and just kind of walked away. And what's funny is as he was walking away, I'm like, I'm like kind of turning and just kind of watching him. And people yeah. were at that point were like, Okay, this is really getting weird because we now have the police face to face with Jason Voorhees. So oh, no, the, the cops are scared of him. What do we do? <laughs> yeah, it's so much fun though. I I really love dressing up, especially when I'm hidden behind a, a, a latex mask and a hockey mask because it's so good. You can't see my eyes through it. So not wow. only have you got this Jason Voorhees guy staring at you in a mask, um, you are also. Uh, um, you can't see his eyes or anything. In fact, people are asking to see a picture. The best I can do is pull up a pic real quick from uh, Instagram or something and hold it up to the camera. Yeah, well, while you do that, I'll talk a little bit about BlizzCon. So Please. before Sorry. before BlizzCon um, opened to the public, I went there on, on setup day, and I've never been to BlizzCon. I've never been to anything of that scale. And I was absolutely floored walking through hall after hall of... Um, Hmm, oh, there he is. <laughs> see, do I, do that? I don't know if you can see that or not. No, you're going to have to email me later. Oh, I'll okay. have to look it up on Twitter. Or, I mean, Facebook or something. Um, so, I, I immediately got in trouble from security because I started snapping pictures like crazy. And then I got in trouble from <laughs> Blizzard because I started tweeting them out. Yeah. But, uh, talk about kid in a candy store. So I'm walking through Rosewill sponsored. Rosewill is uh, Newegg's in-house brand. Sponsored all of the cases. So there were all Rosewill cases. Gigabyte sponsored all of the motherboards. And I'm talking like, I don't know, somewhere between three and 5,000 rigs. Right. You know, filled with, with just goodies. So we've got Gigabyte motherboards in all of them. We've got NVIDIA GTX 770 graphics cards in all of them. We've got probably I, I don't know it was mind-boggling so much RAM like we can't that's the hardest thing here in the studio for us to get a hold of for builds is RAM no one will sponsor it for us they're wow. so taxed on it getting a hold of it is like oh are you kidding me but then I go to BlizzCon I'm like well here's all the RAM <laughs> this a is where it is a data loves me a data <laughs> maybe I'll hit them up for my build too <laughs> they sent they sent me some XPG some of their gamer RAM Nice. Well, people keep people have asked me all the time about RAM, why prices keep going up. I'm like, well, it doesn't help that one the leading you know manufacturers are going up in fire and, <laughs> and yeah, all that sort it's a of stuff. Yeah, pretty horrendous manufacturing process that we take for granted. That, no, that not only is. that, we see this every five years or so when we start to see the next DDR iteration start nearing. Mm -hmm. They start slowing down production on DDR3 or DDR2. They slowed it down. Mm -hmm. DDR3 launched, it was extremely expensive, DDR2 went into the ground on price, DDR3 became mainstream, DDR2 went through the roof on price, and that's just what happens every time. And we're mm -hmm. probably less than a year away from DDR4, that's my guess. Ooh. That makes it tough because, like thinking about building my, my rig here, I'm like, what can I do to be able to quickly swap out? I still think DDR4, though, might still be the same dim. I, mm -hmm. I think it will be. It's speculation, honestly, guys. Just because I know Intel's going to want to grab, hopefully, at least one more generation off the 1150 socket. Mm -hmm. If they bring out DDR4, that requires a whole new motherboard. Mm -hmm. That's going to hurt their sales too, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm speculating and hoping, but whatever. That's just me, I guess. Looks yeah. like people who might have found my Twitter of my Jason Voorhees mask. Let's see. Are they here. posting it up? That's what it looks like. <laughs> That doesn't look like it came up with anything. Hold on. Um, all I can say is, I, from the experience of wearing a costume, I have a newfound respect for the people who do that. Definitely the craftsmanship 
those who make their own costumes and compete in the contest, the level of craftsmanship in that stuff is mind blowing. Just the talent in the mm -hmm. artistry, I, I just couldn't believe it. And my own costume was commissioned by Svetlana Kint, yeah. uh, or it was commissioned by Intel from Svetlana Kint, who lives in Germany. And she won the grand prize of the costume contest with her costume, which was not sponsored. You know, there's mm -hmm. all this speculation because everybody heard she had sponsored costumes there. And then it became like, oh, well, was the costume she was wearing sponsored? And no. Um, she did this Protoss Wizard, which was a hybrid character that she kind of created. And now her likeness is going to get added to a Blizzard game in that costume. Right. Which is totally badass. I mean, she had... Learned, she learned how to program LEDs for it. She had lights all over the place. She had this staff that had a charging USB charging cable and this bag <laughs> she carried around to charge her staff. It was gnarly, and I couldn't believe it. And she really should have won three times. She should have won for mine and Joanne's costumes as well. But just the, the painting detail on it was all done by hand. I mean, it was just it was wearing a sculpture. And um, as you can imagine, wearing something very, very hard and not forgiving, it was extremely painful and very uncomfortable. And uh, Svetlana did warn us. She said, it's going to hurt. You're going to be in pain. You're going to be covered in bruises. And You I have was. to own it. <laughs> own the character. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, people were asking to see my mask, and I thought I had my box with my costume, and it's still in this office, but I don't. And I'm not going to get up and leave the stream to go get it, so... Sorry guys, but in, anyway, uh, yeah, it's it's fun. I liked it, the dressing up and stuff. And I, I'm a fairly shy guy. A lot of people may be surprised to hear that, but I am pretty shy. And so the fact that nobody's ever really like come up to me yet that's recognized me from YouTube, mm -hmm. because the first time they probably do, I'll be like, oh my god, stranger danger, and I'll run away <laughs> because I'm I'm really shy. But in the but in the Jason costume, you can't see me. In fact, there, most of the time I'm busting up, smiling, kind of laughing mm -hmm. behind the mask because they can't see it. And, you know, I don't know why everyone thinks it's important that they have a staring contest with me, but I've never lost because I can do whatever I want back there. You can't if you want to play <laughs> off the tough guy angle. <laughs> yeah, so. really. Okay, what else we want to talk about here? Let's see if there's anything, inter anything interesting. What, what, what? We had our, I had our topics list handy, so we, <laughs> when this happened, we could reference it. <laughs> what I'm no I have it up, too. What I'm noticing is... I seem to have created some people maybe being concerned about buying anything now because I said DDR4 is around the corner. Guys. Oh, yeah. All right, let me clarify. First of all, there is not going to be any need whatsoever to immediately jump on DDR4. Listen to that very carefully. I do not feel DDR4 is something you're going to need to jump on immediately. By the time DDR4 matters and the price comes down... And, the, and software developers are really taking advantage of the RAM, you'd probably be ready to upgrade again anyway. And not to mention, it's going to... The price the of DDR3 will go down first mm -hmm. before when DDR4 first launches. That's the time to buy DDR3 <laughs> because yeah, really. you can resell it for a lot more on eBay once it goes back up. One of the smartest things uh, anyone ever told me about purchasing any kind of computer equipment is don't buy more than you need. Mm -hmm. You know, don't buy more than what you're going to be using it for. Because if you overbuy, you know, you're going to be not taxing something. You, you're spending money essentially on, on things you're not going not gonna to use. Yeah. And, and just to have the newest, latest, and greatest isn't usually a great excuse. So look at what your actual usage is yeah. and then gauge what you're going to build or what you're going to buy based on that. And like for me, the rig, I'm... I'm building, I'm purposefully going to be building it bigger than I need because I'm not entirely sure mm -hmm. what the extent I'm going to be using it for. I just know I want it to last a long time. Yeah. I, want, I want it to be able to do what I want it to do if just on a whim I decide that I want to put something really taxing on that system just to see if it's something I think is cool. I want to be able to do that. Yeah. But uh, I kind of have that luxury. If you don't have that luxury then you know figure out what your actual needs are and build that computer don't go crazy like you know oh i'm gonna wait you know why why wait you know yeah. do what you want to do and then when things need to be upgraded upgrade them if you're gonna wait until you feel like whatever you're about to buy isn't going to be obsolete soon then you would never buy anything because these companies are on a 
fairly consistent upgrade cycle now. See, I would say 10 years ago, yeah, anything you bought today will be obsolete next month because the, the speed at which technology was moving in the early 2000s was astronomically fast. I mean, I was, actually, I was working as a computer salesman in Circuit City in 1999 when uh, the first one gigahertz computer came out from AMD. Mm -hmm. And then it was like the next month we had the 1.1 and then we had the 1.2 and then we had the one and it was all month to month to month. We're right. fortunate now to where you can buy a processor and not worry about a new one coming out that's faster for at least six months to a year, which is yeah. which is a good which is good now. I mean, you know, graphics cards release once a year and by once a year, I don't I don't mean like we just had, you know, another AMD event. I mean, you have one refresh of the series every year. And each every product line and level in that series gets refreshed once a year. So that's why I tell, told people back in June when the seventy or the 780 launched, um, hold off, don't buy it yet, don't buy it yet. And there's a lot of people who couldn't do that, and a lot a lot of people who actually um, got angry with me because I I claim that you know I'm this this tech geek and this tech addict and I have to have the latest and greatest. But what I've never said is I have to have the latest and greatest when it launches. Mm -hmm. So by waiting, I. I'm not getting rid of my 3770, by the way. I've got a golden chip. It does five gigs without a sweat and mm -hmm. s extremely fast system. I love it. The graphics card, I'm still running a 680. And there's a lot of people who freak out at the speed of my 680 and how well it benches because rather than run out and buy something new, mm -hmm. I figured, and I, and I advocate this for everybody, overclock it. And if you're really daring, which it, actually I did a video on this, it's very easy. Hack the BIOS and do a custom BIOS so you can overclock it even farther and put some mm -hmm. put an aftermarket cooler or do a water cooling loop. And you can extend the life of what you have now. It's a lot cheaper to go with $300 or $400 with the lower end water mm -hmm. cooling, get an extra two years out of your system rather than buy a new $2,000 computer every, every other year. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. I mean, it's not about... Um, you know, having to go out and build the latest and greatest, learn the ways that you can optimize what you have because right. it's so, just from like a wastefulness standpoint, when you think about like all that goes into making these things for us and all the hands that had to touch that and create that, I mean, I, I this might be a little, you know, fluffy for everybody, but I kind of have this thing where I look at everything that I pick up and I touch that has been made by another human being, and I appreciate that, you know, it's somebody had to make this so that I could enjoy it and have it. And so I find it extremely wasteful to just because there's something new, mm -hmm. you know, there's nothing wrong with the old thing, and actually I could probably make it perform better than the new thing, but I, I need to have the new thing so I can be cool. Yep. I, don't, I don't like that attitude at all because you're throwing away something that, you know, is perfectly useful, probably better and, and more useful than you think it is if you just learn a little bit more about it. And also, I mean, when you think about everything that went into making, like that GPU, for instance, if you were to chuck your 680 and, and you know, because I want a Titan. Yeah. You know. Um, you should watch you my Titan video. Like, where my is that going to go and where did yeah. it come from? And did you really need that? No, for what you do. I mean, again, it's like build the computer you need, not... I mean, don't. There's no reason to spend the resources and everybody's yeah. resources on something you don't actually, you're not actually going to use to that kind of potential. I tell you, the upgrade path I would really rather do right now is throw a second 680 in here. Mm -hmm. But the reason why I don't, and this is where you can tell that I might have maybe some prioritization problems, is mm -hmm. the water block I'm currently using. I can no longer get a matching block for. So, yeah, so because they would look different. And I could get another 680 for 250 bucks, mm -hmm. and so the fact that they would look different keeps me from doing it, which is like okay, well, you know. It's okay. I can't judge that. <laughs> I, I mean, I feel like I feel like a dork saying that, but it's like I I'm build this. My, I'm picking my chassis based on how it will look in my room. I mean, like I can't yeah. judge that. <laughs> but but that's the thing that I think really separates a PC enthusiast. Versus just somebody who's all about a functioning game PC because we've all seen those game PCs that are that are powerful, but you can tell it was just thrown together, wires everywhere, nobody cared. They just want to play the games. Versus the true enthusiast who cares about the way it looks and the presentation of it as much as how well it performs. Right, I'm that exactly. guy. I'm that guy. I spent hours one night and tweeting the progress as I was 
perfectly routing the cables for the new power supply unit I installed in this night. You know, like cable management is everything. <laughs> and you can't even see it. But I cared about the way it looked behind the motherboard mm -hmm. tray that you'll never see because I know it's there. You right. know, that's the way that I do this. So uh, we did a three, two, one build. It's kind of like a internal office competition. So it's like three, two, one build. It's like a build saw race that. video. I saw that. And Kyle won in 38 minutes. Really? From yes, from from, but, unbo from unboxing to power up. Yes, mm -hmm. but here is the thing: after he won, he spent the next forty minutes doing cable management, and he was still working on cable management when I finished mine, which was my first PC build ever. And I kind of felt like you didn't yeah. build, you didn't do it. And so our next three, two, one build competition, I'm saying we have to include cable management because Steve was done. Steve was done five minutes sooner than me, but he was done. Like, yeah. his cable management was done. His computer was perfect. Everything was perfect. He didn't have to go back and touch it again for anything. See, I can build a fast system if I need to, because I, I was hired not that long back yes, to... Yes, could you build a fast system fast? I built a fast system... <laughs> well, fast for who, I guess, would be the question. <laughs> uh, I guess quickly would be a better use <laughs> Yeah, I, I, on that I had gotten hired earlier this year to build a fleet of computers for a guy in his business. And they were Whoa. all they were all the same parts. And it was like an assembly line. And I'm like, okay. Uh, the first one, I was worried about the cables and stuff. And by the time I got to the last one, I'm just like, click, click, shove. Click, click, shove. <laughs> so, I mean, if, if I had to do a competition like that, I could, I could totally go in there and be like a china assembly man just be like yeah i'm putting this together okay i'm done where are you you guys are still unboxing okay <laughs> no, i could do it if i had to but my oh, problem also, is his, his standoffs were pre-mounted in his case which i felt was what was that's also like, another cheat and that's my cheap. case my case they gave me they gave me like the crappiest components right so i got the cheapest case and the cheapest everything and my standoffs wouldn't thread because the holes weren't cut right Ugh. and i had to fight with that and see that's like, the thing if you guys wanted to keep it fair you have to use the same parts for all everybody building. see and this is the next the next 321 build that we do because we have like six systems that we have to build that people won so we're going to do a 321 oh, build yep. video of of these systems that are already they belong to people <laughs> yeah so if somebody, the exact same if somebody cuts any corners then it's going to be all over youtube that this person's <laughs> pc build they won is just half-assed by kyle <laughs> that would happen anyway because like the three two one build computers that we did those were also giveaway computers so i mean oh my goodness somebody gets my computer they're like well jenny built this one it's funny though like <laughs> Some people just won't even care. Like I did a build for a subscriber, and he he was so excited, and he was like, "Yeah, I want you to sign the panel and this and that." So I did, oh, and, it yeah. was, and it was fun. But he's got the one J's two cents build out there because I had such a nightmare with um, how much it costs to ship that thing. That even mm -hmm. if people agree to pay it, I'm like, you know what? You might have the one and only J's two cents YouTube build now that's been shipped to a sub. So I gave him like a I made a letter of authenticity for him. <laughs> cool. And I put it on laminated photo paper and stuff, so he he uh -huh. hung it up above his computer, and I was like, okay, that's kind of cool. But yeah, yeah. Um, speaking of more power than you need, sort of thing, the next computer I'm building, I really struggled with whether or not to go with a 4770K or a 4670, and mm -hmm. I think people would be shocked that I went with the quad core and not the hyperthreading, because mm -hmm. for what it's going to be for me, it would have been throwing away a hundred bucks. Now, I know some yeah. people out there, granted, what you see around here are saying, 100 bucks, really, Jay? Are you really that concerned about 100 bucks? Absolutely. <laughs> I yeah, I would be too. I don't live no rich lifestyle, and I want to put that 100 bucks into other things because it's going to be it's gonna be a test bench where I, I can't test a lot of the products people send me because of my water cooling keeps me from being able to switch it around. Mm -hmm. So I had to build something that I knew was going to be strong enough to perform the tasks that it needs and not bottleneck any GPUs or whatever else that I put in there. And I still don't think that we're going to have to worry about more than four threads in games for at least another two years. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, we're the, the consoles just dropped. And yeah. eight, eight thread APUs are still not as strong as four core CPUs. Yes. So I still think we have plenty of power in quad core coming up. And by the way, you got to play with the PS4. Why don't you talk yes. about that? Yes. I was just going to say, are we going to segue to the 
PlayStation that dropped. Absolutely. I was, I, I so just like, I was on that thing like a wolf on a three-legged cat. As soon as, <laughs> as soon as the product manager walked through the door and he was like, we're going to have PlayStation 4 in here in 40 minutes. I need somebody to do a video on it. Paul went home sick. Kyle was in a meeting. Steve was too busy. I was like, it's mine! And I ran over to where it was with our photo team getting its picture taken for the website. Um, I, I just stood there, like, waiting. Uh-huh. Waiting, waiting, waiting for the PlayStation. And then we had to rebox it so that I could unbox it again for the video. And I don't usually do unboxings. I kind of don't like them. And uh, even in my videos here at Newegg, when people are like, oh, do an unboxing, I don't do them because I feel like it's insulting people's intelligence. Like, you can open a box. You know what yeah. that looks like. Yeah. And usually the things I do, like laptops, all that's in that box is the laptop and its power cord. I'm mm -hmm. not going to waste a minute and a half of your time while you watch my clumsy butt fumble with cardboard and all the silliness that it takes to unpack these things. But I did, un I did unbox the PlayStation 4 because it was a little like Christmas morning and I felt like everybody should get to unwrap the gift with me. I was, I was really enthusiastic about the PS3. I probably know more about it than most people really need to know or care. And um, I wish I had had the time to be that enthusiastic about the PlayStation 4, but I was still really enthusiastic about it. And it, it kind of is a bittersweet thing because while it's running um, all AMD internals, it has, so it has the, uh, an AMD CPU, it has an AMD GPU, you know, which combined makes its APU. Mm -hmm. It's running uh, AMD True Audio. It is not going to be using Mantle. Yeah, I, I, that recently came out in the news that a lot of people were kind of upset about was that the new gen consoles were not going to be Mantle supported. Well, that's because they said that it would when they yeah. launched the Radeon graphics card. They were yeah. like, yay, and PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, we're going to be using AMD and Mantle and Mantle and Mantle. And Do then you know why I think... It was kind of like, uh, wait a minute, I guys. believe it will support Mantle through a firmware update because I don't think AMD I wanted... Totally so I don't think AMD wanted the console to beat the PC to Mantle because that would have been today. Oh, right. Technically tomorrow. But yeah, I don't think AMD wanted to show up its GPU line by launching it first on the consoles, because then you're going to look like you have um, favoritism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know there'll be a, sense. I think there will be a firmware update to console later to get it mantle. Yeah, and then it's going to be up to the developers, too, also, if they yeah. want to implement it. I think it would be awesome if they did, because it would streamline a lot of console to PC conversion and PC to console conversions. But, yeah. I mean, again, it's it's the market and it's kind of the politics of, of this industry is that they don't want... Why, why do something so that people can buy one product when we can do it... When we can not do it and make them buy two? Yeah. You know? And, and that's kind of the mentality of it all is that, well, consoles want to be able to offer something that you can't do on a PC or you can't get on a PC. So they want exclusive game titles. They want exclusive technologies. They want PC gamers to have to buy consoles. They want console gamers, like PCs, you know, component makers want console gamers to have to buy PCs yeah. and build gaming rigs, you know. But, you know, the same companies who build PCs and consoles win because they're the same manufacturers yeah at the end of the day but they got twice yeah. your money yeah well, you know you and you and i agree and disagree a bit on the, the console mentality mm -hmm. um you had said that there are things console could do that pc can't i well, don't they want that to be true they that's, want that to be true yeah but that that'll never be true there. that's for sure uh i think the exclusive titles by the developers are simply mm -hmm. like you said they want you to buy a console so they get in bed with these manufacturers like sony and microsoft mm -hmm. and they want you to buy the console they want you to spend 400 bucks to play a, a 60 dollar game right and you know but it, it fits in our lives in different ways i mean i have an xbox 360 uh, i haven't turned it on in weeks but that's because every now and then sometimes i feel like just going out into the living room laying down on the couch and playing mm -hmm. some forza or something but for the most part um it doesn't fit in my life like it would say when my see i guess i'm a bit jaded because even my four-year-old daughter has her own custom pc that i built mm -hmm. and she knows how to use a computer and the only thing she likes on xbox is connect because she doesn't really work the controller too good um but i don't i don't hate console a lot of people think i do i just want to put that out there now i prefer pc i've grown up with pcs but mm -hmm. i also had the first nintendo that ever came out the day it came out so 
I mean, take it what it is, but they definitely fit in our lives in different ways. And I am going to own a PlayStation 4 next year sometime. I don't ever buy the first console run because they inevitably are always laced with hardware manufacturing issues. The first yeah. ones always are. In fact, you should tell me in a month what the re- what the uh, warranty returns are like. <laughs> sort of, well, I guess it depends if you guys got enough volume to really think that there would be that many that come in. But I know that just like when the PS2 launched, you know, worldwide backordered. Yeah. So, I mean, have you guys already... How many How many did you guys pre-order? Do you know? I am not attached to that end of, end of things in any way. I do know that uh, we are the only retailer who's going to have them to, to sell tomorrow. Oh, wow. Uh, I know that Best Buy won't have any. I know that uh, nowhere else is going... We, we somehow scored some kind of exclusivity. And, um, That's crazy. Against Best Buy and Fry's. And so we are going to have them and they will not. I do know that much. I don't know how many we have. I don't know what the price point's going to be or if they're running it in a combo pack or how it's going to work. I know well, none of this. I know that Sony uh, said that they had 444 at the launch event for sale. That, mm-hmm. I guess that's probably the biggest lump sum of any one place. It would make sense mm-hmm. that Sony would have them. But I remember when the PS2 launched, when I was working at Circuit City, the line was wrapped around the building right the night before. Mm-hmm. And the truck came in, and they delivered them, and I went into the warehouse, and I checked the inventory. We received eight. Mm. Eight PS2s. Oh, no. So, lock the doors. Just lock the doors and run away. <laughs> oh, that was a terrifying experience. We received eight, and the way it was working before the doors even opened is the manager and a security guard went out front, gave eight tickets to the first eight people, and said, that's all we've got. So immediately those eight people said, PlayStation 2 for sale and started selling their tickets. And then the next people were trying to sell them for even higher prices. And by the time they even got in the store, they had already paid for the ticket for the right to buy the... I think... I don't remember what the highest one went for, but I remember it was just turning into this, like, crazy thing, and the manager was trying to stop it. Like, no, no, you can't do that. You can't sell your ticket. This, Give it back. No, I'm not giving it back. It was just such a horrible experience. Yeah, and I worked a Black Friday at Circuit City. I worked a Christmas at Circuit City. It's like, okay... That was my only retail experience I've ever had, and it will be the only retail experience I ever have. Yeah, I I don't uh, I don't fondly remember holidays at my retail days, but um. Anyway, so the PlayStation Four, the things I like about it, I like that you are encouraged to modify it in that you can take the 500 gig hard drive out and put a solid state in, and Sony will not void your warranty for doing so. I appreciate wow. that a lot because that is was never true with the PS3 and yeah. the first gen PS3's uh, storage and things like that were a big issue on if them. If you make it modular and easy, there's no reason they shouldn't, you know? Right. And also, it's very accessible. The panel to take off to get to the hard drive is very accessible. I did not take it off in my video because it happens to also be the glossy, shiny panel. Oh. And I am a klutz and I knew, <laughs> well, that's going to get distracted. I'm just going to leave that alone. I'm not going to take it off. But it's there. I like the new controller a lot. A lot of people like uh, Kyle and his yoked parody of it made fun of it a lot. But I do like the new controller. I like the feel of it. It's a little larger than the PlayStation 3 controller. It's more comfortable to hold. The features on it are a lot more accessible. I like the share thing. Mm -hmm. It uh, records 15 minutes of your gameplay every 15 minutes. So So it's just always shadow recording. It's always shadow recording. And so when you hit share, it'll let you uh, edit down that 15 minutes a little mm-hmm. bit to make a, a clip of whatever it was you wanted to share with your That's friends. Cool. And then you can sh- you know, send it out. They also made it um, very friendly for doing live streaming and doing uh, live gameplay and stuff like that. I think the little earbud microphone dealy bob is kind of silly, and I hope that most people will upgrade yeah. to a for realsies gaming headset <laughs> right <laughs> because it's just kind of silly but i can't wait uh, to see the performance benchmarks on it with an ssd though how fast um i guess yeah. if you're if you have local storage of games how fast they load you know mm-hmm. um that would be interesting to see i would like to see that as well and i like that this one it offers a um a play while you download feature. So you oh. actually get into gameplay a lot faster because you can prioritize what parts of the game it downloads first. 
So you can say, well, I don't need the multiplayer part of this game right now because I'm sitting here by myself. So download the single player first. And so it'll download that part first, allow you to start playing, and then it'll work on the other things that you didn't want it to download. It's a lot like uh, how Blizzard for the longest time worked their download. Like if, if you were downloading a 8 gigabyte patch or a 4 gigabyte mm -hmm. patch for Warcraft or World of Warcraft, you could, mm -hmm. once it reached a certain point, it, it received enough data to at least give you basic gameplay. Mm -hmm. And it warns you that there may be some graphical glitches and stuff, but that you can mm -hmm. at least play while it's downloading. So that's kind of neat. Yeah, it is kind of neat, and I I like that. I think um, I think they're touting that it's uh, 15 minutes to gameplay. So uh, regarding those things, regarding the SSD update, does it come mm -hmm. with its own utility to copy over the contents of the drive? Remember how the uh, Xbox back in the day had the disc and the cable, and you would plug yeah. it in and swap it. Yeah. So do you know how that works? I do not know how that works, and I think it's just because they have not released uh, any consoles to be modified yet. It's so, possible, too, that it also you know, is Like, no one got any samples. They, they weren't like, oh, here's your free PS4. Go break it. Yeah. You it's, know? <laughs> it's, it's possible, too, that the, the operating system is sitting on some sort of a soldered-in small, like MSATA or something, mm -hmm. or even a small, you know, drive separate from where the main storage would be for games. I believe that's more likely, yes. Yeah. Um, I think that the 500 gig um, hard disk is just in there as pure pure storage, so swapping it out, not going to really affect much. They probably wouldn't ma have made it so friendly if it was going to like just totally shit wreck your system. Yeah. Well, I mean, it wouldn't be the first manufacturer to allow us to break our stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> like, oh, well, you broke it. Buy another one. Um, All right. I like the design of it. It's going to fit a lot better in people's home theater systems than the PS3 ever did with that goofy curved design. Yeah. Like, where am I supposed to put this thing? Yeah. Also, it's uh, mostly matte finish, which is great, going back to the PS2, which was also mostly matte finish. So right. it doesn't attract endless amounts of dust and fingerprints. And well, I mean, the, the one shiny of... panel on it as soon as I had it out of the box, attracted all yep. of the dust on the desk right to it. I was just like, really? Well, the first, remember the first PS3 did have, like, the whole top was shiny, the piano finish, but then they, when they came yeah. out with the smaller one, they, yeah, I never liked the design of the PlayStation, uh, the way it looked at all, but I think, I think the PS4 looks really nice. It's something it, I would proudly put on my entertainment center and display it. Right, and also it'll fit anywhere you want to put it. It's great. The size of it, it's only two inches tall or it's two inches thick, so if you lay it flat, it'll fit, you know, in any kind of DVD shelf. And I actually have a, a first-gen PS3 sitting here, and it's one of the backwards compatible to PS2 ones. Mm -hmm. Shh, it's my baby. Mm -hmm. um, it belongs to Newegg TV, but I decided it was mine. <laughs> it's yours now. Um, <laughs> it's sitting right here, and I got it. It's at the biggest pain in the butt to try to put it anywhere because of its shape and size. So outside of the aesthetic things, though, um, I'm excited that that AMD APUs are inside of them. I'm excited about the internals. I really, I really want to see what it does. And for me, console gaming, the reason why I kind of like console gaming versus PC gaming is because I want something I oh can Oh, God, not... you went there. I'm sorry. Here's why. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, not, it's you, because I... You I've... can't see the stream, so you're good. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. This is why. It's because I like to uh, not sit at a desk. Mm. I don't like having to sit at a desk. When I'm doing something that's for my entertainment and it's part of my relaxation, I want to be able to sit in a comfy chair and not and, and have a drink next to me and not be at a desk because I spend my life sitting in a chair at a desk. Yeah. And I want to be able to like relax and sit on my couch and not have to be, you know, twenty five inches from a screen. Yeah. Which um I like the PlayStation 3 when I had one because it was like a home. It was like an HTPC. You know, it was a, an all-in-one system. I could play games on it. I could watch movies on it. I could stream Netflix to it. I could do everything. And that was like the first thing of its kind that could do that. And now, you know, you can build an HTPC that will mop the floor with a PlayStation mm -hmm. all day long. Um, but I still have to have a desk to play a game on it. Yeah. Well, that's and that's a little cumbersome when I want to be in my living room, not in my room at a desk. Supposedly supposed to be where the Steam Box comes in, but of course that's yet to be seen. They've been the Steam Box. You haven't heard about that. This okay. Maybe I did, but mm -hmm. you have used you have used Steam though, right? Yes. Okay. Have you pl have you used Big Picture? 
Mm-mm. Okay, Steam, when you log in on the upper right-hand corner of the screen, there's a button that says Big Picture, which then launches basically its its own like operating system slash UI. It kind of takes over your okay. screen, and it you kind of feel like you just jumped into a console at that point. Right. Well, Steam has been working on um, getting hardware developed to run Big Picture as its operating system mm-hmm. so that it can be called the Steam Box, and you can just hook it up like a console, but it's a mm-hmm. PC console, giving you access to your entire Steam library. Oh, that's nice. So you get what you just described, which is you have your PC gaming in your living room, mm-hmm. which honestly is still kind of what a console is. So it it just kind of slides right in between the other consoles. I guess my complaint isn't um, isn't the spacing or anything. It's the peripherals you have to have to PC game. Well, most most peripherals like the PlayStation controller and the Xbox controller yeah. do work on PC, but it, right. the difference is for the PC games you've got to go in and map them all. Yeah, it's a challenge, and PC games are easier to play. I have discovered now. Th- I've come to this very organically. I I grew up in a time when you know everybody had or the early consoles. You know, all of my friends had Nintendos, all my friends had Super Nintendos. We were not allowed to play video games in my house, nor were we allowed to own a console. We had a computer. My dad took me around to computer conventions. He's a big, big technology nut. So we had a, a home built computer in my house from Go. Mm-hmm. Always have. Yeah. But we could only do educational things on it. And so now, and the reason being, my parents always said, well, you're never going to get a game playing video, or get a job playing video games. And now I, I tell them every time I have to play a video game at work and I suck at it, hey guys, guess what I did at work today? I have a job where I have to play video games. <laughs> <laughs> but, so I came to this very organically and I'm learning PC games, and PC games um, are easier to play. Right. For the most part, and, and guys, because you have the peripheral, you have the keyboard, you have the mouse, you have ways like the the way you can articulate things and move things around, and your level of control is hands down preferred over using two little joysticks right. and some buttons and your thumbs. It's it's a lot harder, but for me, it's also it's not just about that. It's about um, you know, being able to sit somewhere comfortable, not have a whole bunch of stuff surrounding me. I can put a controller down and get up and walk away and do other things and come back to it. Okay, guys, simmer down. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, anytime console gets mentioned, it is the most controversial thing. I know, it's like like talking about being pro-life or poor choice. It's just heinous. Oh my God, yeah. (laughs) So guys, listen, let me shed some light on something here. You were listening to all this tech talk from a girl who's really only started dealing with tech five months ago. Okay? So PCs have not been to her world like it is ours. So she's learning that PC gaming is certainly an advanced race, but it's not an easily adopted one to just jump into. So cut her some slack. I agree. Everything she's saying about being able to go in and just kind of sit down and relax in a comfortable chair and play a game that isn't super complex... I, that's why I have a console myself. There's times I want to do that. So they're not hating on you, by the way. I don't know if you can see the, see the stream or not. I can't see the chat at all. So. No, it's turned into <laughs> console gamers picking, the li- picking one side, and a line has been drawn in the oh, virtual geez. sand. So I'm reading, the, I'm reading the chat, and it's just like, guys. And then it's oh. also the console gamers hating on Steam Box. And you know what? Here's the bottom line. PC gaming needed the consoles we have launching tomorrow. Mm -hmm. PC can't evolve unless there's a race to be had, and it's not going to move forward quickly enough if there's nothing challenging it. Okay, it becomes stagnant. The technology becomes lateral moves rather than than advancements in technology. You go, okay, I don't want to next year Intel to say, look, we've got the 5770K and it's got a 100 megahertz faster core big deal who cares about that right i don't want that but if the consoles have then created a situation where amd can now become uh see a lot of games guys you may not know this a lot of games are coded for 32 bit why because you don't want to shoehorn or uh really limit your 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 uh, sales base 
by going 64-bit, because you may not have 64, uh, a 32-bit operating system, but a lot of people in the world do have 32-bit systems. So if you make a game that runs on 64-bit, which utilizes all of these threads and all of this hyper-threading and 8 gigs of RAM, you leave them out. And as a, as a, as a developer, the last thing you want to do is leave anybody out. You want to develop for the masses and give options for the minority, which are people like us who have very high-end PCs. So to put it in, in lingo, I understand it's like um, only making only making accessories or only building uh, race tracks or roads for Ferrari drivers, right. and forgetting that most of the world owns Hondas. <laughs> exactly, and so the fact that AMD now is in both consoles. I mean. You know, Intel. The Intel Xenon processor was in the 360. I don't recall what was in the PS3, but the fact that we have 64-bit, uh, eight-core processors in both consoles means that the developers can now develop for 64-bit that mm -hmm. cater to both consoles and PCs at the same time. So now that people run in 32-bit, which also included the, the consoles before, they're the minority, mm -hmm. and 64-bit is the majority as of tomorrow. Now this is big because it means that as gamers, we are gonna finally be able to really let our PC stretch their legs. Because we've heard it all along. You don't have to have a super powerful PC to play a PC game. You don't. But there may be a day now where you don't need it, but if you have it, then you're treated to something special with gaming. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm looking forward. And if you guys were to say and consoles disappear tomorrow, you limited where we go in PC world. And uh, me and my roommates and, and all of us here, we all get together and we'll play games together. And, um, you know, one nice thing about consoles is, is they're kind of like the campfire. You know, you sit around the campfire and you all play together. But then I've done um, PC gaming with a group of people, too. And that is also a lot of fun. And I think that, you know, the technology is cool. I love it. I'm a gearhead of every kind. I love technology. I love all the hardware. I'm... I really do uh, for a lot of different things. And so for me, for that, that particular interest group of mine, PCs are where it's at because I love anything I can build. Mm -hmm. But I still like the kind of campfire of the console, like where everybody's sitting around it and you're like looking at each other and talking to each other. I just feel like it's um, a little bit more... I mean, the more PC games go online, we become more and more distanced from each other I feel yeah I, how, I don't know how much you guys get to interact with the chat or anything on the videos you guys work on but let me let me give you a little glimpse into my world and how frustrating this can be at times are you ready <laughs> yeah the yeah. conversation was PC versus console and this and that so I just kind of put that one to bed and now the conversation is turned to yeah but 720p is ugly <laughs> <laughs> so it's like well, it's a good thing that the consoles can do 1080, huh? They can as long as the devs code for it. There's some games right, already, like COD Ghosts, everyone was upset because it came oh, out. Yeah. It's going to be 30, uh, 720. I, I, loved your, I loved your rant about that, like how we need to start demanding from the developers. Like, stop buying, pre-buying games. Don't oh, do that. Yeah, Don't I had a pre-buy. I had a message in that video Don't that I really wanted people... give them your money before you know what you're getting. I really wanted people to hear that. I don't believe in pre-orders. I have never pre-ordered anything. Mm -hmm. I don't pre-order. I have grown up with parents who've been self-employed, have had to earn everything that they have, and have never expected anyone to pay them before they've earned it mm -hmm. and for anything. So I'm very old-fashioned in the way money is to be handled. And so when people are like, hey... Pre-order this, and we'll give you some free virtual shit. I'm like, you can keep your virtual shit, because I want to make sure that there's even anything worth playing that virtual shit with. <laughs> I don't That's... want your virtual shit. I want my real money. <laughs> exactly. And so a lot of people who pre-ordered Ghosts in Battlefield 4 learned the hard way that, you know, pre-ordering can be an evil, evil thing. Because I don't feel anybody should get their money before they've earned it, and that's what these devs do, by giving us a crappy game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree, and I, I think that if the developer, especially a, a developer is huge as EA and, and them, they can, they can make oh, games that can work and be beautiful on your optimized system. They can make games that will show brilliantly in 1080p. They choose yep. not to, yep. so, and then they charge you the same amount of money for it. 
That's because 1080p when it first came out was like the resolution that nobody their PC couldn't handle it. Yeah, it's since the 4K of to you know yeah of that. So you had then 1200p came out, 1440p, and 1600, and then they started building graphics cards that could handle it. So now that consoles have finally caught up with 1080p, mm -hmm. the conversation in chat, by the way, has now switched mm -hmm. to 720p versus 4K. So what? that's not a conversation. <laughs> it's a conversation of well, the consoles in 720p and blah blah blah, and it's like well, PC can do 4K now. Yeah, I would. I would really like to see... I mean, come on, even Linus himself hasn't been able to benchmark any of the new GPUs at 4K because they don't have a panel. I guess and I'm, for, for me I'm not what it boils down to is the experience. It's not ne necessarily how good it looks. It's not necessarily um, any of that stuff. For me, it is what kind of experience am I having while I am using this particular game? Like, guys, am I with my friends? Yeah. Am I uncomfortable? Am I, you know, engaged? in what I'm seeing and experiencing, it's it's not just, you know, the game. It's everything around the game. Yeah, exactly. And you know what's funny is I have this... I have a high-end PC and I can play any game I want, but you know where I've spent, according to um, the log, at least the, the gamer log that logs your hours, mm -hmm. I, I've spent 20 hours this uh, in the last month playing Minion Rush on my phone. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think I've played like eight hours of Battlefield 4. Yeah. <laughs> so why? And because I'm having why, more fun. Minion Rush doesn't kick me to desktop. And that's why ba our Blizzard is spending lots of money developing games for tablets. Because we want, we want to be able to sit with it in our lap, throw it in our bag, walk away, take it out later, put yeah. it back in our lap. You know, we want to be able to do that at coffee shops. We want to be able to do that in waiting rooms. We want to be able to engage in that beautiful... Uh, you know, thing, that story or, or whatever it is that turns us on about playing that particular game. We want to be able to engage with that as often as possible. And you just, I can't, as as pretty as my, you know, F Bit Phoenix Phenom case is going to be, I can't put it in my purse. You can try. I can't take it with me. <laughs> I would like to see a video of you trying that. That'd be pretty funny. Actually, <laughs> I did a I did a video on a Lian Lee case that has a handle on the top. Oh, it really? looks like a little silver lunchbox, and you could, like, carry it I'm, around with you. I'm going to show you what a tech dork I am. Mm -hmm. This is, I bought a Nexus 7 for one reason only, and that's because I was too cheap to buy, and you'll see it turn on here, I was too cheap to buy a field monitor for my camera. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah, I use my tablet as my monitor. <laughs> Why not? Nexus 7s are what are, like, what, 150 bucks? Less than that? The new one, the Nexus 7, the new one was 229 But yeah, it's a lot cheaper than a field yeah. monitor. <laughs> For sure. So MSI purposes. has one that's 140 What? Yep. All right. Guys, it's time to wrap up. I went ahead and went a little longer than 730 because of the technical difficulties we started out with and YouTube derping us with a one-minute stream. Oh, <laughs> yeah. The derp. Yeah. <laughs> So guys, you've been listening to Jenny uh, from New Egg TV. She does not have her own channel, so if you want to interact with her, you're going to have to do it through Twitter or through videos at which she is a part of uh, over yes. at New Egg TV. Is there anything coming out uh, that you're allowed to give a little teaser about? Well, my PlayStation 4 unboxing and overview should be landing tomorrow. I wanted to get it edited and out today, but our editor has very strict hours, and mm -hmm. I respect her for that. Because hey, I just wish I had an editor. Everywhere. Yeah, we're so <laughs> spoiled here. Um, we really are as YouTubers. Like I told you last spoiled. night, I have to be talent. But I, I, have to be, I have to do the research, the talent, the, the, mm -hmm. I have to be cameraman. I have mm -hmm. to be editor. I have to be uh, the uploader, the annotator. I have to do everything. It's hard. I suppose, okay, so some of the big things coming up for us actually are not in the studio. Uh, mm. They're going to be, some of our event coverage is starting to blow up into being just like, like we're all sitting here laughing at the proportions they're talking about for our coverage at PAX. Some of the ideas that are getting thrown around are, are insane. Some mm. of the ideas that are getting thrown around for us to do at CES are crazy. So definitely check out our event coverage. We're going to be doing some pretty intense Christmas commercials <laughs> next week that might actually be aired on network television. Yeah. Didn't, so, wasn't there something that happened with Intel not that long back? It's probably under mm -hmm. NDA, but I know there was an Intel commercial. No, that, it's not under NDA. You can watch oh, okay. it. Um, they they ponied up and, and 
had this beautiful commercial for us shot, but I don't know what happened with the distribution with the distribution on it, and ended up only launching on their YouTube channel and our YouTube channel. But this is a completely separate thing. This is going to be in house, done by Newegg, mm -hmm. and um, and we'll see. We'll see what happens. But definitely some exciting things coming up. As far as tech goes, you know, it's kind of a slow time of year for big launches, except mm -hmm. for like consoles rake in the money at uh, holiday seasons. So that's why they always come out before Thanksgiving, because they just rake in the dough for the holidays. Yeah. And but as far as like PC things go, not too many exciting things this time of year. You know, it's going to be they're saving up for CES. They're saving up for PAX East. I see some people ask saying, Jay, you never had a cameraman like because I have had one in a couple videos. There's mm -hmm. been some videos where I had to reach out to some friends of mine and ask them for help with camera work. Um, so I do not have a regular cameraman. It's not like every time Jenny goes to do a video, she knows she has an editor. She has a guy working the camera, making sure it didn't quit on her halfway through the video, which has happened to me. I don't know how many times. Oh, and that sucks. Yeah, there's oh. been times I'm doing a video and I go to turn off the camera. I'm like, it, it's not going. And then I watch it back and it quit like three minutes in. We are pretty shorthanded around here. I am not going to lie. I have had to shoot myself more than once. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that's... <laughs> That's why I had to go with this really nice tripod. I will say yeah. this, though. Don't be surprised at CES when I show up with my camera and stick it in your guys' face and put you people on my channel for a moment. Because I'm, cool. I'm going to be at CES, and uh, I'm. it's funny, too, because last year I was at CES. I only had 1,500 subscribers at the time. Mm -hmm. I was by myself. My wife was there, but I wasn't going to make her work. I was yeah. by myself, and I had to be cameraman, interviewer, editor. So I spent all night editing just to get up at 7 a.m. to go back over to the to the main hall. Mm -hmm. And I had to do all that. And I was trying to network with these companies, trying to get them to do a video interview with me or something. And it's always like, who are you? What are you with? How many subscribers do you have? Oh, uh, okay, well, we can't right now. Like, I got turned down so much. This mm -hmm. year, everybody, Cooler Master, Fractal, Corsair, MSI, everybody, hey, you're going to be at CES? Yeah, I'm going to be there. Hey, stop by. Hey, come by our booth. Hey, come by our suite. Hey, come to our after party. And it's like, really? Is this really what the last 12 months has turned into? Because I went from having nothing to do at CES now to not knowing if I have enough time to do everything people, they want me to right. do. So it's, it's kind of interesting how the vendors have clued into YouTube. how valuable YouTube is. And I think that's yep. in no small part to what um, they've built here at Newegg TV because we kind of, and Linus definitely, for sure, you know, he has... A ridiculous amount of subs. Um, yeah. You know, he has kind of broke them into the idea of, hey, this is he profitable. Has. You want me talking about your shit? I'm yeah. sorry, stuff. I, I try not to <laughs> try not to swear too much. I learned that at, after Kyle's live stream, I had to make a pretty substantial donation to Extra Life. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my foul I, mouth. I have a pretty foul mouth too, and it gets I'm me in trouble sometimes. One. So as I'm becoming more known with these companies, I'm like really trying to clean up my act. <laughs> so. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Well, you know what? Here's the thing about being a personality. You have to be you. They yeah. are giving you these products because you are interesting to watch. Mm -hmm. You are relatable. When you stop being those things, they're going to stop giving you product because you'll stop having subscribers. So yeah. if you say, a, you know, an effing shitting damn every once in a while, <laughs> but it gets you a thousand more subscribers, I don't really think that it's that big of a deal. I can't do it because I'm representing a company. Right. I'm representing me. But and I'm so you're representing you. And so you get to have First Amendment rights. You I have, do not. You have no idea. There's so many times. My, my dad, he's, he's senior and he's, you know, he's, re he's retired and disabled and stuff. He's watching this stream right now, right? Cool. And Thank you, you for your service. And you have, he actually did a vlog with me on this channel too um, a, few, a few months back. But anyway, I go to him every now and then. I'm like, look, there's some f bombs in the video, and my dad was a military man, obviously, and mm -hmm. it, it's like he's like, "You're not telling me, son, anything I ain't already heard." I'm like, "Yeah, but I'm <laughs> embarrassed knowing that my dad and my mom are hearing me f this, f that, f you in video," and it's like I'm going off on it. And as I'm recording, I'm thinking to myself, "My dad and my mom are gonna watch this, but I don't care because there's I did an experiment, and I even told my parents I was like, "Watch this, I'm gonna drop a well timed, well placed f bomb in this video." And it's going to get more likes, more views than any other video of the same type of genre. And every time I've made that claim, it's been true. Like that's my Titan, my Titan video, the by the way. Honesty level. I mean, people. That's why I think. That's why I think this medium. And I, I'll try to wrap with this comment, uh, because we were going to talk about YouTube. But I think that's the reason why this particular medium has become what it is and how popular it is. Is because 
it's an honest way people can connect to mm -hmm. information. Nobody and, wants to read and, a blog or a form anymore. Right. No Nobody, one wants to see a performer. No one really yeah. wants to see fake. We want to see real all the time. Yeah. We want to see real people talking about real things, having real experiences. Well, you know, I, and I'm going to say this real quick while we wrap up too, because mm -hmm. I do have a lot of people now, as I'm growing, I'm getting a lot of people reaching out to me saying, what are you doing? Why is it working? Can you please help, help it work for me? And it's like, well, I honestly don't know why it's working. Mm -hmm. I mean, you said things in the early, earlier part of the stream that, you know, you complimented my channel and my style and I look at it and I go, I don't have a style and I hate my editing. <laughs> so I don't see it from the yeah, same. Self-loathing works for some artists. I'm just saying. Yeah, I'm going to go cut my wrists <laughs> when we're done from this. But <laughs> anyway, um, so, you know, I, I have a hard time telling people what to do. But what mm -hmm. what I can say is that I do approach this like a business in the sense that People have been asking me, how do I get companies to send me products? And I go and look at their channel and there's like 25 subs. And I'm like, okay, I've got to come up with a soft way of bringing a blunt reality to people getting started. Mm -hmm. I had 500 subscribers when I got a first piece of product given to me. And it happened to be at an event that I was at because I was in the right place, right time. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until this summer that a single company was willing to send me even a $10 item because you have to have enough subscribers or enough video views to make it worth them to get a return on their investment for sending you product. Them sending you product is a way of, of investing in the exposure of the piece of product that they're sending you. Mm -hmm. So for instance, this, this RAM right here from ADATA, to get a data to send me something, you present them the metrics and say, here is my growth, here was my growth over the last six months, and here is my projected growth for the next six months, here are my average views, here is my engagement, this is what my channel looks like in a big picture mm -hmm. of data. Because that's what they care about is the metrics. They don't care about nothing else. They don't care about what right. you say. They want they, your numbers. They want the numbers. So if you're trying to get companies to send you something, you have to make sure that you are going to return the views to them mm -hmm. to at least cover what $150 worth of RAM cost them, right? Mm -hmm. You've got to give them $150 at least worth of advertising for them to break even, and they don't want that. They want more. Mm -hmm. And so if you guys are trying to get companies to send you stuff, build up your channel first. And by building it up, do what I did. Start finding things around your room or your house to review that it doesn't need to be new to review it. In fact, it holds more water, in my opinion, to review something used because you've been using it. Right. I, I mean, if I it's still a, a product that is for sale and available and you've been using it for six months and you have something genuinely either negative or positive to say about it, if you're honest about it and you have a very good argument for why it is the way you feel about that product, right. that's great. That is a more engaging and interesting video to me than yeah. watching something that, like, like a PS4. Like, I can't really have an opinion about a PS4. I've mm -hmm. never used one. I didn't even get to turn the one we had today on. Yep. So I can't, I can't advocate for it the way I can advocate for my 160 gig first gen PS3 over here that's eight years old mm -hmm. that I adore. Because you, but, but it you always can, but does you what can, I want it to. Once you do open up that Xbox or that PlayStation 4 or that Xbox One or whatever mm -hmm. you're going to get, you then can make two videos out of that. One, mm -hmm. you can have your initial thoughts and review of the of the console, mm -hmm. and you can do a old versus new, and is it worth it? There's two exactly. videos to be had there, because right, I can I'm, what I'm a lot of people, people who don't have like the the resources to get new product or get vendors to send them product, mm -hmm. and you know, like I could do, I could sell anyone in the world a Galaxy S3. Mm -hmm. I love this phone. I could sell it every day. It's not the newest phone. It's not yeah. a Galaxy S4, it's not the Galaxy Note 2, but you know what? I could sell this phone and I could definitely talk about it in a way that is engaging and interesting because of how well I know it because my hands are on it every single day. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, that, I mean, that's my biggest advice to people trying to get started in this whole, and, and let's be honest, reviews are new for me because just this summer did I start doing reviews and that became very much the meat of my channel. Mm -hmm. Because I want to educate people not only with tutorials and how to do advanced things with their PC, but I want to make people smart buyers. Mm -hmm. And 
they the reviews get the least amount of views on my channel the mm -hmm. least i get an average of about eight to ten percent engagement of my thirty two thousand subscribers only three thousand of them may watch a review but mm -hmm. i put up a video calling out dice and ea and it gets eleven thousand views in a couple of hours you know yeah so, i mean that that's the kind of stuff people like but mm -hmm. the companies still like the reviews and i I think I still think of myself as being too small for that genre mm -hmm. because I don't bring them the views like, you know, you got Linus and you got Tech Syndicate and you got Te oh, El yeah. Elric out there. You've got these huge, mm -hmm. you, you know, you've got Austin and you've got all those guys out there. And it's like, well, mm -hmm. what do I bring to the table? But on more than one occasion, companies have told me, and I don't want to, I don't want to say who said this, but somebody told me, you are different than those guys who are doing the same thing over and over you are bringing a new angle to mm -hmm. the tech stuff and we want to invest in you on the ground level. And That's so awesome. I, and so at that point it was like, okay, wow. So I'm a little less concerned over the fact that, damn, I did this review and it only got 4,000 views for this graphics mm -hmm. card. It's the fact that they recognize that later on there is going to be value there. So we establish a business relationship while getting to that point. We grow off each other. They grow through advertisement slash, um, I don't want to say endorsement, but advertisement slash exposure of the mm -hmm. product. And I get to keep making videos because I can't fund this on my own. That's the other thing. Right. I, I ran out of video content a long time ago. If it wasn't for the reviews, I wouldn't know what I'd be doing today. <laughs> you know? Um, you, you find things. You know, you find things. Um, I'm telling you what I but can't it's, wait it's for. It's like in speech writing, they tell you, you mm -hmm. know, it's only... Um, it's only 15% what you say. It is say 80, 80% 80 how you say it. Yep. Like I could, and I could tell that's someone. That's the thing. If you bring something different, and, and for people out there who are trying to get going, you know, maybe doing this or a different type of YouTube channel or, or whatever, whatever it is that you're out there trying to do, mm -hmm. if you do it well and you care about it and you have kind of a, your own quirk and your own little weirdness you bring to it, that's yeah. great. People yeah. love that and they want to see more of it. That was the thing that took me a lot to get used to in the beginning was, you know, people say, why don't you do a video on this? I'm like, well, um, you know, Austin already did it. You know, you mm -hmm. know, Austin is right. Mm -mm -mm. Um, let's see. Uh, take it tomorrow. Elric. Oh yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, that, that's a different guy, but I'm just saying I'm using yeah. other, other large YouTubers as an example. Uh, yeah. it's, I say, well, Elric already did that. And they're like, so we want to know your take on it. So it mm -hmm. took me a long time to realize I can't make a video that hasn't already been done. It's not mm -hmm. possible. YouTube is done out of originality, except for I think how to basic, and he's a whole <laughs> he's a whole different genre. But anyway, yeah. So it's fun though, and it's exciting, and I, and I'm really looking forward to where it's going to go from here because, I mean, then that brings you into the conversation of are you a sellout sort of thing. Mm -hmm. I'd be paying for this stuff anyway, so to say no just for the opportunity to look at it for free would be a fool. Yeah. And I just really. ha I haven't had I haven't had a product yet that's come across to me that was bad enough to put it out to the world that it was horrible. Mm -hmm. I always give the company an opportunity to kind of say, let me know if this was unintentional that something was this bad. Mm -hmm. uh, but if if somebody sends me something and it just turns out to be so bad, it, it's gonna end up being. I'm trying to think of an example. Like if I if I had a PS4 and it was garbage, I'm going to get on there and say it's garbage. You know, as right. an example. Right, and you know what? If you're honest with the companies about that, and you tell them, look, you know, I'm not, yeah, I'm not new egg. I'm going to tell you what I think about it. And and what we do here is purely informational. Like that's why our videos are structured the way they are. And we don't generally give our personal opinions in them, yeah. and we don't do it as a review. It's because we want people to have a place to come to get an unbiased, un you know, yeah. fooled yeah. around with um, view of a product. We want people to have an honest representation and an objective representation of a product, and right. that's what we do. And that's and why you. And that's why like you guys do. Sometimes. That's why you guys do more of the unboxing type stuff rather than the review, because it's hard to yeah. have a review that's not have a conclusion. It has to mm -hmm. have a conclusion. And if you come to a conclusion that your particular distributor or whoever it is that you're distributing for doesn't like, it could uh -huh. suffer, it could be bad for a business relationship. Right. There's, you know, that, that twist to it. But also I think that, um, you know, people do appreciate getting uh, just, just the information. You know, yeah. somebody wants to know about 
a given chassis and there's you know from trying to research products there's not a lot of information out there and you mm -hmm. tend to have to really dig and really search so people who are trying to make an informed buying opinion or a buying decision about something right. they're like look I just want to know what does this thing come with what is what size is it I can't find this stuff anywhere yep. you know that's that's the niche that I think we're very successful with and is YouTube we're just, is where we all info. go that's where we yeah. go to get that info now is YouTube. We want to see interacted and hands-on. Well, guys, mm -hmm. we're going to go sure. ahead and wrap it up. I definitely want to yes. extend a big thank you to Jenny for New Egg TV here. You're um, welcome. If you've enjoyed this stream or what we talked about, do me a favor. Hit that like button on there. Help this video have some relevance. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank her by going over and, and following her on Twitter. Uh, make her number pop up really high and scare her because all of a sudden there's going to be you know 200 new people looking at you today. <laughs> Um, also, too, I'm going to be putting out a video oh, here. Oh, phone's buzzing already. <laughs> I'm going to be putting, I'm be putting out a, a video in about an hour of a uh, little review I did today on my lunch break at work, and there's a crazy guy screaming in the background. It's actually kind of funny. I'm trying to. I'm editing this, going, how do I deal with this crazy guy in the background yelling at the top of his lungs? You so, use it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, guys, go and check that video out in about an hour. Um, but yeah, please hit that like button. It definitely helps us. I mean, I don't think it's too much to ask that you click one little button if you enjoyed what we did today. And if you didn't like it, well, you can do that too. So I'm going to hop on out of here, guys. Thanks, Jenny, for hanging out with me Thank today. Thank you very much for having me on. I, I really have enjoyed my time chatting with you, Jay. It's a pleasure. Okay, I've gotten two new egg personalities on here now. Can we go for three soon? Let's see if we, yes, we can we get can. Paul on Steve. here. Steve. Steve, Steve or would Paul. love to be on. I would. Uh, I, I. I. had the opportunity of, of chatting with him for Kyle's live stream, and he is a fun guy to talk to. Steve is super fun. He really is, and he knows everything. Well, then I can't. Well, then I can't PC have him on. Games. He is the <laughs> PC. Like, there isn't a game like you could try him. Try mm -hmm. him. That he hasn't at least heard something about, if not has it on Steam. Like he's yeah. a game. We call him the game hoarder. Yeah. Uh, because he buys everything. He hey really guys, does. To those, to, those <laughs> anyway. people, to those people asking Jay, uh, Jay, asking Jenny to make a channel, that's what she does all day, and she doesn't want to do it in the evenings. We talked about that. It's like, <laughs> let, her, let her have her cake and eat it too. She gets to enjoy YouTube without having to deal with YouTube. <laughs> yeah, it's, really. um, and, and I work with Kyle very closely, and I know that um, he has to, I mean, he does this all day at work, and then he goes home, and then he works on his content for his channel uh, yep. six out of the, you know, seven evenings a week, yep. and it faces, uh, you face burnout. It, yeah, it really does start to get to a point where he's just like, why am I killing myself yep. over this? I but would be lying if I hadn't said I've laid in bed late at night talking to my wife saying, why am I doing this? Yeah. This is this is why do I do this? I don't understand why I do this. But then every yeah. single day I get up in the morning going, I can't wait to make a video. So that's cool. See, that's what keeps you motivated is it's the, your passion for it, and that's why people are subscribing. Yep. All Plus right, I've well, got, I'm gonna I've got the I'm most awesome off. subs out there. So. Um, thank you, Jay. Thank you, everybody. Follow me, at Gearhead Girl Twenty Seven on Twitter. Yep. Also, you can come over to uh, New Egg TV on YouTube and see what the fun is all about. Definitely catch the last. Yes. Episode of Yoked, which yes. I did 50% of the writing on. <laughs> I agree 100%. You need to go watch that Yoked. It is epic. Yoked is a lot like Tech Talk, but it's a comedy twist to it all. Yeah, so it's it's, a, it's tech news, but it, just go watch it. It's funny as hell. Definitely watch the pirate episode. <laughs> yes. All right, just, guys. Thanks for hanging right, out bye. tonight. Rewatch it when it goes up live. Jenny, thanks. It was a blast. Thank you very much, Jay. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.